today. Really, who can say when done is done? Not Star Citizen. This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint. Depending on where you live, it's the final show of the year or the first show of the year. Wait, shit, what? Did we win show of the year? No, Beach, that's, that's not even I'm not act. even prepared for this. I haven't even rented a tux, and I own a tux. Well, why would you need to? Well, how long do we have to accept this? If we don't accept it, do we just lose it? Paul? Beach, Beach, over here. Read the prompter. And now, the video game news. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Wait, am I in a video game? Oh, my God. Let's dive into the new year by really warming up that comment section. Hey, it's a story about Star Citizen. Or technically, not even Star Citizen, but rather Squadron 42, the first-person shooter game that was originally part of Star Citizen during the 2012 Kickstarter campaign and slated for release in 2014, but instead spun off into its own game in 2016. At the risk of just saying more numbers, the news this week is that back in 2019, developer RSI's Chris Roberts said Squadron 42 would have a public beta in the third quarter of 2020. It's now the first quarter of 2021, and RSI have removed any mention of a Squadron 42 beta from their revised roadmap, with Chris Roberts saying the game will be, quote, done when it is done and will not be released just to make a date adding that it is, quote, too early to discuss release dates. Explaining his desires to further delay the game, Robert said, quote, Over the past few years, I've seen more than a few eagerly awaited titles release before they were bug-free and fully polished, adding, This holiday season is no exception, just so that we were all clear he was throwing direct shade at Cyberpunk 2077. He continues, quote, For most games, it is typical to not even announce the project until 12 months out and only start building awareness with marketing six months before launch. Which may be true, but most games don't raise more than $300 million before they're even released, so typical isn't a very good adjective to use here, is it, Chris? Roberts also explains that they won't even show footage or assets from Squadron 42 because... He seems to think that would negatively affect the eventual marketing campaign surrounding the game's launch? And that sounds like putting the cart several light years before the horse. Squadron 42 backers have more trust in RSI's plans than I do in most of my friendships, and I am terrified to think of what will happen when that fanbase finally activates. We saw what it was like when gamers who had incorporated looking forward to cyberpunk into who they were as people and started lashing out when their game wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. RSI took $47 million of people's money in 2020 alone and won't even show a video. I'm going to need to buy at least five medium freighters for the intersystem capacity required to tow this enormous red flag. I'll level with you folks. I had a four paragraph article written up about the Silent Hill slot machine until I realized that the sources were from 2019. And since we only do the very best breaking news here on Checkpoint, I shit canned that nonsense and I'm coming at you with even bigger hardware news. So sit down, close your laptops and pay attention. Whew. They found the Workboy. That's right, The Workboy. The PDA expansion for the original Nintendo Game Boy. The plug-in keyboard attachment and productivity software combo that promised to turn your elementary school handheld into a fierce business appliance. The Workboy never came out. It was never announced for stores, and despite several efforts to track down any info on its production, there was nothing. The only proof I ever had that it existed was this article from Nintendo Power Volume 36, which I keep framed in my bedroom just to keep the dream alive. And then just last week, YouTube channel Did You Know Gaming released a video detailing their patient detective work for one of their and one of my white whales. Did You Know Gaming tracked down people from the two companies that worked on the hardware and software and managed to lay hands on what might be the only surviving prototype outside of Nintendo's vault. And how does it fare? Is it fun? Hell yes, it's a keyboard you plug into your Game Boy so you can pretend to be a grown-up doing grown-up things like balancing your checkbook and looking up how to say toilet in all the romance languages. 
It even has a world map, and when you highlight Canada, it plays a cute little Game Boy version of our national anthem, which to my great disappointment was not YYZ. I desperately want one, despite having a pocket computer that contains all the world's knowledge and idiocy, plus threes for when I'm taking a dump. And who knows? Maybe the retired owner of the company will see all of the press the workboy is getting and decide to make a Kickstarter to do a limited run. Right? Maybe? Please? Epic is still trying to make hashtag free Fortnite a thing, and it's just cringeworthy. Epic, a multi-billion dollar company, is mad that Apple's rules are preventing them from making even more money and have thus tried to mobilize their fan base to shame Apple into letting them make more money. Their latest salvo are these swag packages sent to influencers like Greg Miller who tweeted these pictures. Now, I'm too old to play Fortnite, but it still took me a while to realize that Epic is ripping on the Apple branding and rainbow logo, which was retired in 1998. That's like 10 years before the average Fortnite player was born. But whoever made this clearly has actual affection for Apple branding. They even got the font correct. Also, Epic, I would like to remind you that Google also kicked your ass off the Play Store. Why aren't you ripping into some 2010s Android swag? Gonna save that one for your next mail out? Nintendo had a big eShop sale over the holidays and I almost bought Dragon Quest 3, but I realized that I don't have time in my life for the length of a classic JRPG when I have a bunch of YouTube I haven't watched. The game normally takes an average of 30 hours to beat, so I'd given up all interest of ever playing it until I learned that DQ3 has a speedrunning community. The fastest playthrough in the world is currently 2 hours and 36 mi minutes, which renewed my interest. After all, I can sit still for a Marvel movie. Surely I can just frame glitch my way to victory and be back to watching lawyers pick locks until I fall asleep. But my leaderboard dreams have vanished again. The hottest new trend in DQ3 speedrunning is literally that. Hot. Speedrunners have been exploiting a power and reset button glitch that results in maxing out your party's levels, and to increase their chances of the glitch working, speedrunners have been using hot plates to raise their console's temperatures up as high as 80 degrees Celsius. The top speedrun now? 22 minutes and 7 seconds. Screw that! I'm not par-broiling my NES just to entertain myself for the length of an episode of Friends! So far, None of the speedrunners have reported permanent damage to their consoles. The only real damage done is to comment sections the world over, slowly filling up with furious typists pissing and moaning that these aren't real speedruns. And while we can flame each other over whether this is just the magic of a true-to-life game genie, what cannot be denied is that gamers love heat. What the hell was that? What? That thing at the end of the story. You know, I... That's the weird thing. I looked and looked, but I didn't recognize it as anything at all. Coming up, KFC has trudged into the console wars with the KF console. It has 4K output, an i9 processor, and an integrated chicken warming tray. The good news is, you can't buy it. Oh, that was the thing. We tried to find when you could buy the KFC console. Yeah. And there's no, they're very particular on the website about like, we're working with Cooler Master. Mm -hmm. These are the specs. We have a modder who came in and made the whole case. Yeah. And there's absolutely no information about when it might be available for pre-order or purchase. Also... It's funny to yeah. have the drawer with the thing. Agreed. But what they're saying is that they expect people to, <laughs> to like, get for delivery or, God forbid, make fried chicken and then go, but I won't eat it now. Mm -hmm. I'll put it in the computer and save it for later. Once I've had dry static and computer dust blown over it for a while, that's when I will indulge. If you have fried chicken, <laughs> you're just going to eat it. Yeah. There's no situation where you're like, I'll have one piece now, then I'll get in the WoW raid, then halfway through, I'll, I'll, th that's when I will open the drawer and have the second piece of fried chicken. As, as, as Professor Meredith Leroy Jenkins said, you know, at least I have chicken. <laughs> for 
Professor Emeritus. Like, well, what is the point here with this anyway? Like, KFC is literally saying that our chicken is not good enough to eat immediately. <laughs> The craveability of our product is not at a point, it's not at its peak, until you have put it through this device. That's all I'm hearing. KFC's weird, man. Yeah, it's true. I could go for some KFC, though. I want Korean fried chicken now. Yeah, that's. I think that should be our new KFC. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.